Okay, so since last time offline, I did a bunch of uh, busy work, basically, a bunch of low level boring work to add uh, binary versions of exports for the graphics resource, the physics library, the position library, and the bring up library. So, for example, the graphics, I mean, yeah, it's just adding more and more of these things, including these kind of export resource um, functions as much as I can, and some other refinements. Uh, so refinements such as, let's see, let's see binary. Uh, in order to make things C++ compatible for like binary automatic, the auto generation of code for binary, I had to do add, let's say, the type when I'm doing a malloc. Not for C, but for when there's a C++ version, which there is somewhere. Um, I think let's just repeat over and over and over again, especially in this case for strings. Um, same thing for Kylo. Basically, anything where like uh, you know you're you're allocating memory, which is a void star, and you're putting it to some other type. C plus plus is kind of like yeah, I need I need this. I don't understand otherwise, kind of thing. Well, I mean, it does understand. It just um, it's just a kind of safety kind of thing. Like you have to be like, are you sure you're doing this correctly? Kind of kind of question marks. Um, let's see exporter, some more stuff. So that's the uh, exporter. I'll kind of go into that in a little bit. The other big thing that happened was a change of for the exporter. If I actually check this, I got rid of the multi binary sets, uh, which is just like a collection of these individual sets, which you know the key, the data, and the data size. For the exporting the components, I mean, you know, previously resources would be exported as an individual, and then the components would be exported as a, as a kind of like a set. It'd go in and would do multiple things. This was because for YAML, uh, or actually, I should probably take, bring up an example. For let's say. The export of resources for graphics resource. So go into here. What would happen is much like resources. Okay, resources because resources are individual, like a single create info. You can go in. You can like do run the the export code for the in single specific create info, and then you can just back out because you're done because you can only have one create info per whatever. And the idea, and like, so you have all like the image create info, you have the material, the mesh, whatever create infos, all under a single function, and then you'd register just that one function. And the original idea was to do something similar for components, right? You go in, you have uh, one function in the binary IMX library, which would handle component, you know, the exporting components. You go in if there's, uh, for example, in the bring up app, you have armature state, you have the camera, you have the render state. And so the idea was to do something similar there. You'd go in, you export anything that it's kind of handled by that, and then you would return, you know, one, two, three binary sets in one larger thing. And while implementing this, I kind of realized like originally, the original plan way back, probably like a year or two ago, was that originally you, you'd be able to like turn on and off the import export functions of each type. Because let's say you, know, you have full render state here, but what if you have like a more advanced or a different version that you want to use like to export later or something like, you know, whatever the case may be, you can, the idea would be like when registering uh, the exporters, you'd be able to turn on and off individual at the export of individual types using a specific exporter like you you'd be able to supersede for it with a newer version newer exporter down the line or whatever so rather than have them all together which was just kind of a more of a thing of convenience which i must have done some time ago uh, together i decided to break them back out again so now when you go in, when you find a, a, a component type to export, 
you just you just iterate through all of the registered ones and so like each export uh, function now just deals with one component type and in the future i'll go back and split back out like the resources as well but that does mean like now i can actually export like one binary set at a time and handle that in the export um so that was one big change i go back to up here exporter so yeah that was the big change uh some slight renames there the other one was the exporter uh i haven't really done much since last time except i added you know to do be able to deal with the ex you know, export the exports of the component data i had to actually implement the export function in the exporter that goes through each entity and goes through all the components oh, it it grabs the name ah that's actually that's something i don't do i don't actually export the name do i no i don't hmm okay uh export entity yeah and now i do actually export out to the file uh, and I believe, right now, if I go back here, the file isn't too big. I mean, it's test save. It's 1.6 kilobytes versus what was it? data. No, data. Bring up data, the data A, resources. Which, yeah, they're, they're, it's very compact compared to what it used to be, at least for this kind of data. But there's still a number of things I need to do. So, <sighs> there's a couple of things that I was going to be doing today to do today to basically kind of complete binary exports. So one thing I'm going to do is on the export side here. One thing, there's a number of small little things. First of all, I'm not exporting the keys. So I'm just kind of exporting the data raw and there's no actual like key information. So you can't be, you can't really read the data. It's just kind of all a jumbled mess now. Nor can you like determine where a entity or resource ID's data is located inside the mass. You just have, like, I'm not doing any of that stuff, which is necessary, right? I'm just doing a plain old export of dependency data, the resource index data, and the entity index data, and then the actual data resource data sets. Oh, I don't even do the component data sets. Well, there you go. That's a bit of an oversight on my part. So that's a number of things that have to be done a day. Hmm. All right. So uh, I do. Oh, I do actually set up the data size and then the data itself. So I'll be able to read that in, but I still need to be able to do something along the lines of I need to be able to f write, you know, the set dot e. Now because I don't actually have that, what needs to happen is I need to go down so just before I do this, I need to create a map, an unordered map, maybe. Something like that. And it's going to be the key. The key is going to be star on star i guess oh and what is a type name i need some kind of like uint basically would it be that or can i do a vector hmm char star okay they're yeah, just done on site 32t no is there ever even a possibility I can even have 255 types? No. I don't think so. More than 255 resource types? 
I really don't think so. But I'd rather have a little bit of uh, leeway. So it's like, let's just say 16p. So that'll give like 65,000. There's no way I'm ever going to hit that. Uh, so I'd have resource. Yeah. Type map. Something like that. So what I want to do is... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Oh, I don't really know. So, 4 times... Okay, this is what I'm going to do for the moment. I right, equals 0 times less than resource data sets. Plus I. Size. So I want to get auto switch iterator equals resource create info type map dot get find find um, resource data sets i dot e. I don't actually need to do comparison of the string, I just need the pointer to the string location. If search iterator equals like map.end, that means we don't have it yet. We have to add it. Okay, so then what we want to do is we want to create a uh, resource created for pipe dot map dot insert. We'd have the key and this dot size. Const iterator? What? Okay, so let's have to do this. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That equals that. Okay. We'll go through all of those. So what that should mean is by the... Okay, let's get rid of that. By the time we reach here, we'll have number of indexes... Three, four, five, six. Go, on, go, 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 go. Okay, resource. Create info type map. We only have one, really. Are you sure? Uh, does everyone just have a key of zero? Just a key of zero, because I'm not setting it. Okay. Problem one. Result is set dot p key equals binary key for o image create info that. And I basically need to kind of go through all these things and set that. O material. file I'd want to do the same thing here almost q yeah that's one thing I do want to do then I want to see like if we do like an assert that um, it equals no is this C++ yes or pointer I need to assert that A 
would be sea of stars. So back here, we got mesh hypersphere. Shape of create info. Vertex descriptor, really. Rick cube. Okay, so that's that. I need to go down to graphics VK. Is there anything in here? I don't think so. IMAX, don't, nope, I need to go down here. Physics, libs, binaries, source, rigid body, that is going to have result, EQ, EQ for rigid body. Okay, position. Physics has got another thing. Um, I still have the resource up here, but it's still integrated. Okay, now I go back down to position, binary, source, export. Is there a resource type? No, just the component type. Okay. Resource, nope. Simulation, we've got to go down to here. Good state. Key for camera, center state. And there should be a resource type. Yes, there is. Armature create info. Okay. So that, let's rerun this again. Actually, I should probably like, uh, whoops, save base. Okay. If this is good, which it should be, yes. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. It's like in back. It's basically backwards. Okay. So what I want to do then is, okay, let me just write that, 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 uh, create an index. So resource create info. Mm -hmm. Resource create info something. Something like that. So we created the index 
Oh, we need to find our U index. Now what would happen is like U in in T. Um binary key index equals resource data type info. Um set dot P T. Then we want to write that out. One GitHub file, writing that out the file. Okay, that data size data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is on when we're re-importing the data, we're going to have some kind of, we're going to have some map, I think, of the keys or the indexes to the keys or some kind of, there'll be some mapping between indexes to keys and they have to, and the keys have to match. The importer that's being used must have a matching key or something like that. Something... I have a vague idea, but like they're, they're, the idea is to kind of, it'll, it's got to work somehow. It's going to have to work somehow. I'll figure out the refinements when I actually go get to implementing the imp order sometime, basically probably next session. Uh, so back to writing out the binary key index. So I need to go through, so I think they're all the same. <clears throat> they should all be the same string length. Um, so I just need to figure out the string length of the first one. If hmm. Yeah, okay. I need to know how many, okay, first of all, yeah, how many keys are there? T from keys equals resource. type map size to do that's going to be shrunk down quite a bit. That size. One GitHub file, right? Then we have to go through each of them. So we're going to go through 16 times. So it'll be info type map by size. No, no, I have to go through like four. Go through it that way. Operator dot second. Sixteen T, great. One file. Then we need to F right out. Uh, iterator dot first. No. What it points to uh, the size of. Equals length of resource begin first. So 
that times t length times one uh, we have our file okay writing all those out then we go to writing out the resource data all right Let's see how that's going to fail Let's do, let's go to here. We have seven keys, that's a 16 bit item. The key length is 56. These are 56 bytes large, which is quite big. Are they all 56, actually? Um, can I assert that the... equals... that okay so that brings up the once point six kilobytes to two point one kilos bytes <laughs> But at least we only have like the key, the large keys once in the file, right? As opposed to like before each of these. So that that's a savings, in my mind. Okay, create an index for resource data for binary keys. Okay. I guess I want to do the same thing for res the entity components. Component. Do I actually have any? I don't know. What am I doing? I'm doing. Okay, I'm exporting component data for that. So I should have some. Component data sets. Gonna give me anything? No, there is just nothing. Nothing is exported. That is woefully incorrect. That has to be. You're not going to tell me that there's three, four indices. The next entity ID is same thing. Sorry. Okay, there's how many? There's no uh, unused indices. We're going through just one. So this exists. This does exist. We know that. We'll have, oh, I'm, not, I'm still not exporting names either. Mm. I'm going to want to export names in a different location because they are because they are very optional as opposed to the rest of the data. So I want to like, put them in a separate location, I think. Or would I? Hold on. Maybe. I'll figure it out later. But we're supposed to go into here. Go inside of here. We have a final time. We're going through each function. Oh, I'm just not even... So this is a value of zero, but we don't actually have any data. No, we do have data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. See, I thought I actually had a bit more here than just throwing away the, the, the uh, data. 
Good job, me. So this one is result of zero, even though we don't actually have any data. Realistically, I want it to be like a positive result. Like it's not a not an error. It's just like a you know success. But I mean, I didn't crash. There's no error. But like it's not the result that you wanted. So I need to do something about that. So I need to uh, do that now. Otherwise, I'm going to forget it. Forget it later. So let's actually go back in. Have a very close look at what's going on in here. So we're in here. Going that binary success. We didn't do anything. Okay. So physics binary result. Results. Please, no exporter. Ah, it really shouldn't be my thing whether or not there's an exporter. Because it could be an exporter that I'm supposed to be dealing with, or it could not be. No, like this, this first case is bad. This is pretty positive as well. Why is it positive? It should be, um, No export. Binary, phone physics binary not exported. Data not exported. I think, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Data not exported. So what I'm going to do is go back to docs, the XML for, let's say, photo graphics binary. We have something there, that's great. So we're going to have Case of it's a positive oh binary <clears throat> data not exported it's a positive value so we're going to take that we have go down to physics binary where we have mm, it's not an error not data not exported great position positive one so i already kind of had inklings of what i was doing here or what i was going to do and i just forgot in the meantime i have to resume there's no nothing here simulation do i just not have i guess i don't have here okay hold on hold on <clears throat> Success, binary, result. This is just manually done. Okay. Um, data not exported equals one. This is the beginning of the error cases. So this is going to be sitting at like negative one million. So all of these are all negative at least. Don't need that either. That can go away. So that means going back down to here or up to here. This starts off as binary data not exported. Did I just not? Okay, I got a these uh equals one equals negative one 
trillion, whatever, who cares? So we got that as positive. The rest of these error cases are actually negative. We don't actually need this. Uh, da, 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 da. Graphics VK, there's nothing for that. Physics, binary results. That's a, okay, positive data. Oh. Positive case, good. Ribs, binary, include, results. Double check. One, print one. Okay. Let's go back through. Uh, whoops. Data not exported. Data not exported. That's great. That's the initial case. I need to do the same thing here. So result equals full binary data not exported. And then it'll change to Basically this, which will be a success case or some other error case. It's not success and the data was set, yeah. Hmm. Actually no, this will set the success, yeah. Whether it's like binary success or some other success, it's still zero. So that's fine. For me. So got that, we got data not exported for that case. Okay, so that was physics, let's go to position. Do do do, position. Not exported. Result, we'll set that. Nothing, there's no resources here. Nope. So we've got to go down to this data. Okay. Bring whoa. Bring the wall. Okay. I'll, I'll fix up the result stuffs after this. Test cases, binary data. Did I not do it on this? Okay, get back to the same point I was. We're here. So this should be basically a result of one.
Ah, if that, then we need to then and that was set. Then we need to free whatever was there. If is less than or equal to zero, that was either an error or we're success. We're in the success case. Then we need a breakout, and we, then we need to leave because set. Okay, then we set the set right. Set no sets here. Set that here. Need to reset, and I basically need to do this as well up here. If that, if it's not equal, else, if or success, p binary set equals set. Okay. No. Because there can be multiple of them. Yes, 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 yes. Of course. Back up, back, 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 back. Hey, <laughs> back up. Okay, we're here. If it's less than full success, that means there's an actual error. We're going to return immediately with that result. If result dot value, if there's a value is success, then we want uh, p binary sets replace back set. Okay. Else, oh, get out of here. If set all p data, data. Out, right? Export successful. Add data to be sent out. Oh, and then data equals back. Free it. If we have this, some error occurred. Okay, that looks about right. Let's just uh, confirm that. Uh, this by default, if it doesn't do any, if there's no nothing to export, it then leaves without actually exporting anything. Might be right. Maybe. Hmm. As it stands right now, it's right, but I'm thinking ah, there's got to be a different way to do this. I'm not doing it today. So one, that is not set, so it's, and it's still greater than zero, so we're carrying on. This is CPP, so I can actually just set it like this.
Okay, so it sets this, which is whatever that key is. Got another key. I'm sorry, what? No, this is this is incorrect. Okay, so after the first key, second key, I probably just forgot to set uh zero. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go back through, find the function that's not ah, this guy. Oh, binary data not exported. Okay. Did I forget it for any either of the other ones? So camera. Actually, assert. We're here, we leave, we have, I exported the one entity, I didn't actually do anything with the name yet. <laughs> I want to, hmm. So that is... Returning, yeah, that's not good. Do that. If it's negative, then we're returning that. Otherwise, we're always going to return that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's try that again. Great. Carry on. So we get out of here. We have how many data sets? Please tell me we have some. We do, we have four. Get some keys, that's great. Now we're probably. So let me at least get this data um, to file now. So I just you just go through all that. That's great. Resource data sets. I t i equal zero. I is less than. Okay, the total data size is going to be more than that though. What is what do I even use this for? I don't actually use this for anything. Okay, get rid of it. that and we do 
components, data, so it's going to be very similar to this. We have, we want to create an index using the keys, entity, one of binary keys, um, binary key map, a bit more. that up here as well. So that, 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 okay. Going to component, component, data sets. That and that. Okay. Next we actually write out the binary keys. All of those, and then we want to write out the entity component data. And then we would leave. Okay. Okay. So now at this point comes the question of what to do about the rest of the binary data. By binary data, I'm talking about. So in the YAML versions of like the data A, you have resources. And some of these resources are pointing to, let's say, the image. This is pointing to the test.png image, which is held in the external directory of this. Now that's fine for YAML and that. And then you kind of have like some meshes, which you're looking at cube tower FBX files and whatever, shader files and what have you. I don't want, when I'm exporting data as binary or trying to ship it across the network, I obviously am not shipping all of these extra files. I want to have them, I want to have to re, okay. Realistically, what I would do in the end is I would transform it into some kind of like just plain old binary interchange, easy to read and write interchange format that's just internal to the engine. But I don't really care to do that today or anytime in the near future. Like I don't want to have to like import from file. I wouldn't want to import this or like the FBX files. I, I don't want to import all the, 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 the mesh data and all that stuff and then re-export it uh, and deal with all of that today. Because realistically, that would also eliminate the requirement for, let's say, having to have, you know, the asset importer library on the client, right? You use that in the development environment where you import all the data, you put it into a, like the, a, a common format for the engine, and then you give the common engine format out and ship you know, the readers and writers for that common format to the final uh, client, customer, whatever, the end client. You don't want to have like asset importer or FBX importers and exporters or Blender file importers export. No, 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 no. And same thing for images. You don't want to have like, I don't even use this yet, do I? Still no. But in the meantime, because I'm quite lazy and I don't really feel like doing it now, especially since I don't really have enough of a experience, entropy. I don't, I don't have, I haven't seen enough different file formats to really determine like the best way to actually re-export it into a common format. And I'm not even going to try until I do have a better idea on how all these things are structured and like who's doing it the best way. Hell, I may even go with whatever NVIDIA's, um, what do they call it? Universal scene descriptor, I think. But that's again, in the future. 
For today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something very janky. And instead, hold on, can I do this? Okay, I need to see if I can actually do this. The idea is that I would just, you know, I would just copy the binary data from the hard disk and put it into this larger binary file that I'm exporting. Just all of it, like just raw, just a straight copy paste into a larger file and then have that kind of indexed in. But can I do it? Any good, um, importer exporter should be able to read or write or realistically read from, uh, memory. So like in the case of this, like for asset importer, for 3d asset importers, but is there AI import? Yeah, there. Are. Okay. There, there it is from memory where it just take the raw data in. So I could just copy paste it into memory and then just have it read that instead, which would be fantastic. Okay, there's that. What about graphics DK, lib binary? Image. Image loader has, I'm pretty sure I'm using something else. No. Come on. Here we go. Free image get file type. Free image from file name. Okay, free image from load. Ah, load from memory right there. Once you get the free image file, okay, I'm, I have to give that free image format. I have to give that. What? Not even like a. Multi bitmap from memory from handle. If I remember, okay, what's this? What is this? Okay, if I remember, what are you? Where do you come from? You're just that, okay. Okay. So I, yes, I can read from memory, which is going to be required for this. Basically, it's going to not be great. And, and then I'm going to have to change these formats to be able to handle that, won't I? Hmm. Okay. One thing at a time. Or. So if I was to do that, copy and paste the memory around, files into memory, in, into a binary file, how do I want to do that? If I'm exporting to bin... Hmm. I may want... Because the question is also like, what? Do I do when I go the other way around as well? What if I'm loading a binary file? Like I'm lo lo importing from binary, like a compressed binary file, and then I'm exporting it as YAML. I need to be able to rip all that stuff back out, don't I? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Don't... I need another type. I need another type of like mesh create info. So I need to have this, and then I'd have to have like mesh binary create info, which is slightly different. Right? Maybe, or, or, I 
I'm not sure yet. Okay, I've got a. I've been about an hour, so I'm gonna take a quick, uh, get a quick drink of water, and I'll BRB. Okay, so I don't really want to make a modification of this, and I don't. Okay, not right now. I'm just focused on exporting the data to a binary location. So what I'm going to do instead is. I want to have basically update the export. Uh, I'm X binary exporter. I need to export some other kind of stuff from this. So what I'm thinking is okay. These are like the file. Hmm. Okay, the key, the file, the perhaps what I want to do then is I have one set of components. Is it component? No, it's resources, right? Uh, uh you have a oh no, I can have multiple. Oh no. This can that be? Yeah, of course it can be multiple. Oh, like data may come from multiple sources. That's unfortunate. So I need to may need to bring back the binary sets back, anyways. After having made hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go again. We've got this again. Oh, IMAX binary sets. It's going to include... I need that. And then I need to do that, right? That's a single object. You can have multiple objects underneath it. Yeah. Okay. For now, I'm only exporting or getting resource data from that resources. I won't bother with components quite yet. So, let's see, what is this? Is this, yeah, it's done by that. Okay. Sets, we have on the exports. Sets. Mm. MX binary sets. Either that, or can I give like a list of files, file pointers? That may actually be better. Maybe. I have simulation, so I can find the file. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, right. Okay, new idea. Um, file count. I'm not finding there any files. Not as straight as I was hoping, but it would work. So what I would do is I would just like pass back. Okay, these are the files I want to grab. And then I'd go into the simulation and say, hey, give me the file location. And then I would read it and I would just like copy it as is. I think that's what I want to do. Okay. 
So going back to this, uh, with binary sets, we'd have to have like a still need a standard vector of oh, I meant binary files. Something like that. Hmm. <laughs> I have a thing here. Okay, I need to have and files. Okay, we go down to here, we're gonna have P binary sets, we're gonna have export resource data, yes. P files, great. We we pass it in for here, P files. Source files, something like that. Now there's always, oh, there's also an, always a chance that files may be repeatedly used across multiple resources or even components. So I want to, after I get all this stuff, I want to like be able to sort it. No. Um, maybe. Uh, I'll figure that out later. Uh, resource files. Let's save that. Resource files. Get that back out. Then we do something about it down here. Or at the end. I'm not sure. Be external resource content, or maybe that instead. Uh, I need to go down to graphics. Okay, which is up actually. Got to go to no, not this resource. Here we go. Resource, oops, binary. Inside of here, we got the different resources. Star P files, okay. Hmm. We'll set it to zero. Okay. This is kind of very individual so files dot count equals zero one. There's one file for image. Hmm. Would be a union. Hmm. For the moment, I do, I do files dot pp files equals no of size of where my star times files dot file count equals uh 
Okay, I need to say that this is what is this? This is info. Image is info. Star that. E file. Um, and then I want to set this is down here. Otherwise, I want to do Files dot pp files three files dot pp files okay. Otherwise, we're sending them out. Uh, that means down in the exporter, I'm also going to have to deal with this. So creator of source files. So let me see how this is um, working. No, 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 not quite yet. I'm experimenting with files, okay. And I do the files, so hold on, set. Okay, yeah, yeah, I need to, if files dot file count, not equal to zero. Then t files right back. Then out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's a lot better. Let's see how that works. Okay, I want to see files. Uh, e files should equal something that says nothing. Nothing what's However, what? What is it looking at? Hold on. What? It was just not set. It's just, that was just a, a my mistake. Test.png for an image. Great. Wait. That's incorrect. No, 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 no. It should not. It when it returned, files should have been completely blank. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh no, no. Unless it was being returned by something else. 
yeah, 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 that's probably what's happening. Okay. Okay, let's go back. Let's back that up. Don't set the stuff. Rather, binary source default registration. We just set that. If, yeah, go back to here. No, where was I? Got too many things open. Okay, close the others, roll back down to here. One uh, position ribs binary source here. It's not here. That's a component, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I've got resources down here, though. Yeah. that What did we get? We got. I, I didn't yet even actually <laughs> change this yet. Copy that. Material. That doesn't have a file. Mesh file does. And it's going to be. So, mesh file create info. That's. Really. I don't actually have access to this. I guess not. Resource mesh data info. Okay. E file. Great. One more should be shader. Got those. Roll on down to this. I don't actually do anything with this yet. I don't actually have any relationships, do I? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't even bother with files yet or physics. Means rolling down to about here. We got several files, won't we? So that's going to be a case of include armature state. Mm, that doesn't really get us far. Okay, so it's not armature state. 
Oh, uh, yeah, because that's the component. I need the armature. Create info. Here we go. We've got files here and files here. we got, okay. Oh, armature. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Uh, size P, file count equals zero. So I need to go through, first of all, I need, oh, okay, actually equals one for the file here. And then file, okay, actually. Four size T, zero, less than. Can I just do that? Source data. Um, equals that and that. Makes it a bit easier to find. Thank you. So that and then that there. I need to include. Armature to info H animation count. Whoops. P resource CI the animations I um, dot P file. Oh no, it would just be that. Plus that. So I want to do uh, files dot file count equals that. Track on star. Actually, I don't even need that. Size of. Times files dot file count. Let me say files dot pp. Equals that, so it's one plus I equals that. And files get copied around. Okay, great. Resources and the ones here. Okay. That looks correct. I think that's correct. Let's go back to the exporter then. This is here. We go through each of these. Let's see what we get. Now, of course, is this going to be the final form of it? Probably not, but I need to, you know, this is the initial stage. I get it all through, I get it all working, and then I can refine it. P files shader dot okay, shaders, whatever. Great. Got one. Got one, which is another shader, another shader, another shader, another shader, another shader. We have three files: cube tower, one cube tower again, two sphere tower. Okay, it's looking pretty nice.
Okay, if I have that, then I need to go down to the writing point, external resource content. So I have a bunch of files in the resource whatever. I need to make them unique, add them to a vector, sort them, make them unique, and put them in the file. Copy and paste from the file system. Find them in the file system, then copy paste. Mm, yeah. External files. Source files. Place back another one of these. So integrator dot uh, file. Oh, oh, yeah. I need to go through each of them. Or zero times less than integrator dot. No. Back. Do that times I. Let's do that for all of them. Then I want to do string four. Oh no, because they're pointers. They're not the actual strings. But I can do strings. <laughs> Place back that. That will automatically convert it to string, so I can just do external files dot begin. External files dot end. Okay, we sort it. Standard unique. Iterator equals a new and iterator. Okay. And then we need to erase all the ones after that point. So external files dot erase. External files dot and it's the other way around from new and iterator to the end erase those then all we have left are these specific files now hmm. i need some kind of indexing mechanism don't i hmm. Mm -hmm. that plus that if I increment if I increase maybe hmm. okay For, forget the indexing mechanism for now I can add that later it'll be pretty trivial I just need to get the data in so at this point, I need to do like the sim state. Um, find external file. This is the interesting thing right here, isn't it? Oh, I'm not thinking about binary to binary, am I? Oh, no. Whatever. Let's 
So path equals this. All right, this is return to path, yeah. That's a string. We're passing the string in. We're going to find that. If it doesn't... Okay, let's just assume it exists. For now. Add checks for file existence. What do I do? I want to do copy f right. Can I? Hmm. Can I just like copy file read? Copy this file and see with f right. Allocate a buffer, use f read to read one buffer of data, followed by f write to write that data back out. Repeat until you copy the entire file. Ugh. Not great. F open. Where the file is. I need that. Read binary. Buffer is going to be like what ten a kilobyte at a time? No, forty nine six, four kilobytes at a time. Three bytes. Uh, while there's hmm. Zero. Yes. <sighs> well, it's not zero. Bytes. No. Is it a do while, maybe? Bytes equals file read of the into the buffer size of buffer once is the other way around size size times whatever why did there I don't know file stream okay the input so stream file. F right. Size one. Yeah. Okay, then F right is what? It's buffer file. Okay, so similar. Buffer. Size of buffer. Times one. Do the P file while bytes one equals zero or just greater than zero. In file, okay. Uh, can I just get like a size P of bytes zero? I just want to be able to read that. At the end here. Uh, 
I don't even know the total size of the thing. It's not great. So I have these files. They're sorted. Hmm. File path. I open the file. I have a buffer of that size. I'm going to read one byte. No. Oh, no, no. Yeah, by times. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense, right? Yeah. It's times one. The And I'm assuming I'm going to get out of here, right? Yeah, I do. After I didn't even actually put that out. Okay, so if I do this the opposite way, one times that. One times up to that size. That makes more sense. I think. Uh, um, total bytes. Uh, then I want to say bytes. Forty ninety six, great. Plus and equals that. Get out of here. Go down to that point. We got ninety seven kilobytes or so. So that's the entirety of the file. Then we do this again. Eighty one kilobytes, fifteen hundred. Bytes, 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 bytes. All that's being copied into the one large file. Do a bunch of other stuff. Great. We exit out of that. That saves now 188 kilobytes, but data bring up Hundred and eighty eight is still smaller than three hundred and fifty six kilobytes of that. Plus I'm not even doing any real compression of this stuff or reprocessing or anything like that. Okay, I can live with that. Need to okay, now I need to add hmm the data size. I don't know the size of this total thing. The size of the files from the start, from the get go, instead. So, graphics resource should have four shaders somewhere. Shader loader, load shader from file. I open the file, I see how big it is, I, then I seek back to the beginning. Okay. Uh, F seek. So I want to seek the in file. Tell G. Um, So that's the file position indicator and the multi byte parsing statement. Okay. Seek 
seek. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can use fseek. So that the off is seek in int wince. Oh, origin. Yeah, okay. From begin current set. Seek set? What's seek set? Seek set is... Argument to fseek indicating beginning of file. Current... Okay, yeah, yeah. Go from the beginning to the end of the file. Okay. Then tell me... Tell me... Uh, total bytes. It's a good thing. Can I actually test it out here? E in the file. Ftel. That. And then I want to kind of go to the beginning. Doing what I assume you will be doing. So we got that, we got the total bytes. That's not what I was assuming at all. Terrible. If streams up in text mode, binary streams are not required to support seek end in particular. Okay. Um, see one size of binary file. Zero to seek end. No, oh, hold on. Okay, stat? No, that that'd be Unix only. Um yeah, I'm already in C world, aren't I? Hmm. Zero to seek and does that actually do what I think it may do? Then I can go back to the beginning, right? Please tell me. Okay, ninety-seven two one two. Great. So I can I can do that. CT Okay, now make sure that the seek back to the beginning actually works as I expect it to do so. Yes and yes. Okay, wonderful. So then I can actually just print out five. five. Memory at right total bytes two that times one e out file great then we uh, file over and over and over again. I don't have an index for this quite yet. I'm going to work on that next. Okay. 
Now, how do I even, how do I want to do this? I could just open up all the files first, find out all their sizes, and then get to the point where I'm writing them out and then have the index up here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I need like a struct up here, which is like, you know, um, file. <laughs> we got the standard string of uh, file. File path. It's not even that. It's going to be what? Equals that, right? So you need to do that. No, 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 no. I look at the file, I open it based on that. I kind of have to, wouldn't I? I've already sorted it through it. And I'm going through and doing this. So then what I want to do is I'm going to struct. Path. File. Oh, I want to do that, don't I? Um, path? No, no, no. String. No, standard string. File path, size, sorry, not size, but print perfect BT, file size. And then I need a file star, e, file. So I do this, get a total bytes, get out of here around something like that okay seek back to the beginning of the file that's true then what I want to do is I'll export back where I have the file export that where I go dot p file path equals iterator dot file size equals four bytes dot file we do that then we leave here then I'd create another thing where, like, after that point, then I'd um, file locations, something like that. Mm, yeah. If, uh, sorry, for what a iterator of file export this. This. So we're going to draw file data. So that's not going to be here. That's going to be part of the other thing. We're going to have a buffer of that. Uh, 
that's going to be reused. Generator.p file. I want to assert that iterator dot file size equals total bytes. Then we leave out of here. And we have an index. So how would the index work? Like it'd be an offset from where the start of this was, maybe, or the offset into the entirety of the file. I mean, if this is the last thing that's going to be written out, which is quite likely, then I know where I am. Then I know everything else. I know the size of everything below me. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know the size of the um, all the file names together, do I? But yeah, okay, I can I can find that out. It'll be an offset of some sort, an offset from the beginning of the file or the beginning of where I am now. I'm not entirely sure. So for the moment, I'm going to assume it's going to be the offset of where I am now. And then I'll like add later on when I have a better like tracking of the number of bytes I'm writing out for the rest of this stuff, then I'll add that to this section here. So for... Iterator file short list. Strings are made up of two components. The length of the string, the string itself, and then the offset that I'm looking for. And the data size. I'll actually put the data size here. Yeah. Okay. So it would be like what date offset data size, then the string contents. Okay. Make my life a little bit easier. F right. Probably both the UN thirty two T. I don't know, zero for now. Um and offset. Times one. Equals string length of iterator or uh, iterator dot path dot size. Is that correct? Does that not have the zero? I don't think that has a zero. It should be what I'm looking for. One file break. Iterator dot file path dot data. String length one. E no, file. Then we have the output data, the, the raw data is printed out afterwards. Hundred eighty eight kilobytes. If I open that up, open it anyways. Yes, thank you very much. There's a bunch of stuff going on in here.
Okay, so that up there is the original. That's the actual data. And then this is the actual whatever this stuff is. Okay, so then this, that's four bytes. So that's the UN32. That tower at the bottom, or these, hmm. No. This is the location where I'm writing out the uh, indexes for all the stuff. Which is mostly zero nulls, yeah. And then this is the export of the actual data, starting with an FBX. No, no. Here. This is the beginning of the FBX right there. Okay, so at this point, now I need to like figure out the offset stuff, the offset locations, basically a general refinement of this. Um, okay. So, okay, let's get size E. Um, export. Zero. File export index size. Plus equals size of the one thirty two E. E plus mm, size. Win thirty two C plus the string length of this file path file sorry file iterator that so I'm pretty sure by this point file export index size should be fairly deep. Three hundred seven bytes for all this, so it'll be at this point. I'll have to add three hundred seven bytes for that, and then I the offsets for that. So equals that's going to equal this. No, no, no. Equals that. And then what I want to do, no, 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 And then what's going to happen is that this is going to be total file offset plus equals iterator dot file size. Okay. Because by the time, okay, but as long, let me actually read up like total written data. That. Length. Okay. Then we go down here where we're doing that, that, and then this. Okay, we want to do something similar down here again. So we got 
16 plus the bank. Plus this stuff. Can I just like tell where I am actually? Hold on. I should be able to just tell. Hold on. Actually, no, let's see if I can actually match it. If I can match it, then that'd be great. I'm here. I done this. External resource content. Now I want to see, hey, can I tell how where am I? <laughs> Total offset here. Um, total written F tell of heal of key out file. I'm at this point. Does this match? Well, does it? Total written twenty two ninety nine versus twenty two ninety five. Oh, I'm missing four bytes somewhere. I missed four bytes, or did I? Sixteen thirty two data size. Sixteen in key length. Okay. Oh, I missed this right. Yeah, two bytes times two. Oh. I was very close. So close. Very, 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 very close. Where was I? Um, <laughs> resource data export, the binary key. There it is. Twenty two ninety nine, twenty two ninety nine. Perfect. Okay, that means the total file offset will be this plus that. That'll give me the actual offset into the file from the beginning of each exported file location. Total file offset, and then I just want to increment it with the file size. Oh yes, because it's that 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 that, which I'm just about to write out here. So, 32, 32, 32 string length, which is iterator size. Yeah. And then I spit this stuff out. And that's asserted to the right size. So. Hundred eighty eight kilobytes. Very nice. I wonder, uh, see the data A external size of all this stuff ninety five, eighty four, and three. Both. That's yeah, okay, that, that about matches then. Um, raw external data, the data sizes, I've got the binary keys, I've got the file key, the file path keys, okay. Is there anything else I can think of offhand to do? Yeah, I think that's about it for the exporter for the moment. Now, that's not to say exporter is complete. That's definitely not the case. But... At this point, to advance further for the exporter, I need to actually start work on the importer so that I can then like verify like that they're that you know that the output can be read by the importer, and then once I have a better understanding of how both you know both ends of uh, this will work and how well they mesh together and what issues I have, 
at that point, I'll be able to really figure out a better way to refine things. I mean, yeah. Now, one last thing. Is there component data? There's no external component data right now. That might be in the future. Would that be? I don't think so. I can't think of anything. No. Okay, so that's where I'll leave it for today. Or for this session, anyways. Because, yeah. To advance now, I need to I need to work on the importer. So that's the yeah that that's it for the exporter for now. So until next time, cheers.